Hey, what's up, guys? It's Zoharks here with Gobble Radio. I never steered you guys wrong while making this. So I wanted to give you guys a new outlet to make your own podcast and help you guys understand where you can go. If you guys go to download the free Anchor app, where you can go to anchor.fm, you guys can make your own podcast. It's free. It will distribute all your podcasts to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And at this point with Corona, I don't see why you, you know what I mean? You're just sitting at home, bored. Might as well make your own get started. I'm, I'm waiting to hear. Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five. I actually remember, I remember a tweet you put out maybe three years ago, Virgil, where you were like, I need water. I've been with Kid Cuddy for two fucking days. Ouch. That's how I feel. Right <laughs> wow. <now>. Rough. <laughs> 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 Facts. I need water. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any yeah, water sponsors for Basil? <laughs> yeah. That's real. Do you need booze? So yeah. I like Twitter better than Instagram. <laughs> wow. I, I Why? Yeah. You like Twitter free the We nipple. can't hear you now because you don't have the mic. Oh, they did. Yeah. yeah. There's porn. I yeah, there's just porn like Twitter. looking at pictures. I don't have to think when I look at pictures. I'm you sound like someone I know. No, Twitter. I, know. Where you go. <laughs> I go to Twitter just to read three of the people in this room. Maria's trying to chill back there and be super cool. <laughs> but <laughs> she's here figuratively with a microphone. She's a Twitter god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twitter, yeah. like oh, amongst men. Yeah. She's a Twitter god. Yeah. And you guys, I usually just go to see like. Once every like few four days, like what you've been up, the thoughts that you guys put down. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you'll get that barrage of Virgil retweets and likes. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm just checking in, you know. Checking in. <laughs> I, I wish Luca tweeted more. Yeah, Luca's, Luca's going. <laughs> All right, so this is no vacancy in at the CUM University, Miami, Art Basel 2016, no wave, and um, yeah, Virgil Heron. Side. You already know. You already <laughs> know. You see it. You see it. So the first question, really vacuous and unwarranted, is how much do you think if you put all these clothes together, <laughs> we could raise for charity? <laughs> 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 like, I'm just, I'm just, let's, let's, are those from let's just throw retros? numbers out there. These are, these <laughs> are those the eighty retro. These are, the 80 nah, these are the first. Retro. These are like the newborn. This is like when they the first out. kid. Yeah, eighty five. Like, oh. They're alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the first ones. I yeah. reckon we could raise. Yeah. I reckon what first run. Fuck. I reckon we could. I reckon we should do it. We should actually a year from now put all of these clothes that we're yeah. wearing right now Rare. up for sale. Yeah, and just give <laughs> give the money away. Whoa! Right? I what just charity? peeped the Louis Vuitton. Because <laughs> 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 when you said that, it was like, oh, it could be like twenty bucks. <laughs> all of us are off the wave of high fashion. Yeah. F- cut to it's really not Tremaine. twenty. <laughs> shoes and I shirt like they're from 85 I can give, I can give you an estimate on Tremaine right now over at $8,000 I've, I've been doing side side DJ gigs I have, I have something yeah, in there for the last month <laughs> you're just looking at the clothes no but hey real talk what are you guys doing in Miami anyway because no one ever actually knows why anyone's in Miami they're just like you're going to be there part of being a part of it yeah Driving it's the convergence it of culture you know my thing is like obviously whether you participate in culture or not, it's recording. Like, you know, it's always the red light's always on. So unless we're here, I feel like their culture is not getting a, a taste of our culture. Mm. That's actually really poignant because the more time I spend out and coming to these things, I start to realize slowly that all the people I thought knew, what, all the people that I thought th- th- they knew what they were doing actually don't know what they're doing. They're just doing it. Right, so when you go to like the art fairs and you go to like the parties and stuff, you're kind of like, well, they just put it together, so it's <laughs> not out of reach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas before, yeah. from a distance, they're like, like really professional, right. <laughs> and I'm actually like, no, it's and pure that, chaos. Yeah, pure chaos. Well, it's like quickly put together. Yeah. Autopilot. Yeah. You know, it's like pe- oh, I had this epiphany earlier that people are either awake or they're asleep. You know, like you could just go through life. You can go. You can yeah. get it to like okay. 60, yeah. 70, not actually being awake. To like a larger context of zeitgeist and the movements of art and commercial call, you know, not even like cool stuff, just like yeah, because I mean, we we all could have we all been coming to our Basel for a minute, and like you could have just kept coming down here and just DJing. I could have kept coming down here and hanging out, 
Pagano seeing what's house. going on, Pagano House, whatever, Stussy, whatever. <laughs> the third, third. Definitely not shopping. And then, you know what I mean? But, like, you have a, um installation at the design, you know, Miami Art Design. Yeah. You know, so you, you made, like you said, you made a choice to participate. And um, maybe there's kids who come down here to hear you DJ and then they're like, oh, shit. You know, they wake up from the hangover and yeah. they trickle down to the to the to um, design Miami art design and get inspired or not. Maybe yeah. they see it and think, hey, I don't want to do that. Or maybe they say I could do something better than that. But it's more than just the parties. I'm not saying the parties are a, a, very, a very a part of part of it because I feel like like we always say, there's conversations that happen at these parties. Do in the car to the party after oh. after the set's done that we've actually put into reality. But I feel like it's important, not even just Art Basel, that we do something more. Because even like with this house, it made me, sh- like you guys missed it yesterday, but um, what were the guys that performed? Brian Butler. Brian Butler and um Matthew, I forget his last name. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like a crazy like performance art of like neurosis, like conscious, unconscious mind. And they uh-huh. just did an ill performance. And I'm like, and then ASAP Rocky walks in and yeah. Onyx Collective's performing. That's like the magic trick for me because it's like, I, it's a layup just to do, you know, get my friends like V, Silver, Benji B to come DJ. But then they have something else that is off the beaten path for people that are coming in and see that. Like That's like the magic. And I think it's the same thing with what you're doing, you know, at Design Miami. It's like you're doing something that's not expected. You know what I mean? Because yeah. on so many levels. Yeah. But I think we've all kind of mastered or we're getting close to mastering the art of making it look like we're not actually working. <laughs> when um, we're constantly working. Seamlessly. This is like a new way of being kind of professional or semi-professional. Yeah. Because everything does happen from the conversations we have at nighttime, basically. And at nighttime, we're playing music and drinking. Question that got pitched to Heron and I in a talk yesterday. The concept of selling out does it still exist? So, Brock got a text from Bobby Hundred saying, I can't remember what he said exactly, but he said something like, oh, you, it looks great out there. It looks super cool. It's, and then Brock was like, why are you not here? And he's like, well, I can't be there because people consider me a sellout. And Brock was like, well, if you don't sell out by the time you're 30, you're going to end up broke. That um. was Brock's reply. <laughs> that was my answer <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, he, he's like, I was like, man, get real. Like, people got bills to pay. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you don't. I feel <laughs> like <laughs> no. Nah, I feel but like does no, selling I out. Like, if we did a insert brand here, what's the most thirstiest brand? I feel like we could make it cool. Like, and it's something that like four years ago I would not have said that. It would have been like, ah, oh, like, you know, that's going to do some damage. But I think there's been a line in the sand and then we've jumped over it where it's like people don't care and it's a new landscape to to sort of like in quotes work i think selling out someone saying someone sold out is like fuck you drop out of capitalist society then we're all sellouts unless you drop out of first world capitalist society like you know if you're gonna live in a society why not maximize affect culture and make as much money as you can you idea. know, because that's that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to affect culture and make money because my little brother got Crohn's disease and America doesn't have free health care. So and my dad, if I don't figure something out, he's going to be working at CBS Day 75. My grandmother's a 90 and broke and they're happy not playing no violin. So me monetizing off my creative capabilities and talents, if that's selling out, it's like, fuck you. Come pay my bills. Because I'm not. I don't want to drop out of first world society. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean. So I don't. Selling out is selling yourself out. What you want to do. To me, selling out is. You know, if you're working at a job you don't like and you're too scared to chase your dreams, or even just do your hobbies on the side. You don't even got to quit that nine to five. You could do it for fifty years. But even just do what you want to do. That's selling out. You can only sell out yourself. You know, like these. You know, these like hipsters and critics. They want to see every artist broke and disenfranchised. You know what I mean? It's like 50 Cent said once, like, someone said something to him about selling out. He's like, well, then why you get a record deal? Just do your, you could do your raps. Yeah, but I mean. And I not mean, get a record deal. Why you, you know, why you get a record deal and then act like selling records is a bad thing? Yeah, but here's, here's the thing about, here's the thing about culture. Like, it literally is an idea that we make up as we go along, right? <laughs> so, at the end of the day, everyone's concept of it doesn't have to be the same. And my whole thing is just like. 88 keys on a piano you go from major to minor scale like do you know what i'm saying in the you know in 87 like drops so the thing is at one extreme of it it's just going to sound high and the other extreme is going to be low 
So my yeah. whole thing is I was really sad when I heard like Nasty Girl it might be going into acquisition or might be going into like liquidation. Bankrupt, yeah. Because I'm like, that's a great female founded independent brand. Yeah. The clothes might be disgusting to me, but the thing is it's hard work and it's a part of culture. Yeah. At the other end of the scale, what you're doing is also, do you know what I mean? It's all, it's all on the same piano. Here's a question. Ultra. With these great minds, <laughs> like the word culture, let's actually like listen, reach a milestone <laughs> in this art dad <laughs> establishment. What is cult? Like, are we saying, it just got this freak out, like are we saying the word culture and it, which not actually defined, it's like saying the word lit or something like, or like what is, so I would, I'm just gonna preface, preface it with this because culture is actually like what's happening. So it's like draw a line between One Oak, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. the the door at up and down, visions to this house, to random fashion party, fashion week so party. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, so it's like the, we operate in all these zones. Like, it, I think it could use a proper, going into 2017, like being a realistic view. And, and it's like the brands, we know it's off-white, anti-social club, no vacancy, hair and Preston with a project, you know, like just like a conscious look at what, like we use this word culture and then we can bend it. I think culture is um, just, it's like the beginning of that most Def's first album. He's like that when he's talking about hip hop, he's like people act like hip hop is some, you know, big giant that comes down and crushes the village once in a blue, blah, blah, blah. No, it's how the people feel. So if hip hop's happy, if people are happy, hip hop's happy. If the crack epidemic is going on and motherfuckers is fucked up, then you got NWA and Public Enemy. When motherfuckers is getting loads of money, you got P. Diddy and Mace in silver suits. Yeah. You know what I mean? So same thing with culture is like, what's going on? So Donald Trump is culture because people in America feel, believe the shit he was kicking. And they bought into it, no, so that's a no. No, they don't. No, you know, no, you, they were whatever, but they voted for him. More no, people came out and voted for him. But the, but we go back to the same discussion that we've been having for the last few days. It's the people that didn't vote that's the problem. Those people are always going to vote. But for I'm him. just saying, that's what culture is: is the current zeitgeist, what's happening. And like I've said before in the past, culture is caring. Example: when we do the good music showcase, you know, with Pablo, Pusha T, Migos, Venus. no vacancy, but. Venus wasn't on that flyer. You inserted her because you wanted to represent New York culture. Yeah. Because in the, the day, Migos are incredible. Quavo's one of my favorite rappers. He's from Atlanta. Pusha T, he's from VA. He's from London. I'm from New York. You're from Chicago. You got someone who represents the new New, new York, York culture to the high. That's a you cared. You didn't have to do that. No one like if you didn't do that, that wouldn't have. It would have affected the night to us. Yeah. And maybe. Half, maybe twenty percent of the crowd. That so you cared enough to just insert Venus. So, so to me, that's culture on that level. Yeah. And then there's the other stuff I'm talking about. Yeah. So listen, I think I think what we do actively is we we participate in our culture. So that's that's the culture that we're in. Now, if you want to define it like in terms of a genre, it's almost impossible because the one thing that's happened that we've never had before. There's no subculture anymore either. Because well, it's, it's just the internet. We never yeah. had that before. And so the thing is, when when we when people were younger and we didn't have the internet, culture was the most relevant way for kids to be connected. That's what we needed, because without it, we were just like, okay, how do I know you really are? What's the collective? the club. What's that was the, the club. collective yeah. now, now, culture's reached its peak. We've actually saturated, because we have the internet. My yeah. only, like, defining it is not even the objective. It's more so, I have this, like, innate fear that the glory, or not fear, it's, like, the idea that the glory days are gone. I, so, like, I believe so, too. But... I feel like that's like devil's advocate. I feel like it's a device to to promote laziness is to be like, it sucks now. So I don't go out or L.A. sucks. I say that often, mm -hmm. but like New York is not the same. But it's like we were doing other random stuff before. But I think apathy is the new like people are yeah. just like so cool. That's yeah. post Williamsburg, American so Apparel. I'm a snob. And so culture is like, whatever it is, Apophetic. whatever it's like, okay, it's lower than now. If I say, here's a rent, a party, I'm gonna just do some like yin yang. It's like, oh, we got a whole bunch of 
out of town rappers. Let's put someone local. It's like boom, it's better. Design Miami. It's like a whole industry that thinks that we should just be doing parties. And I'm like, oh no, I got something over here, and it looks totally different to me. That like each of the that style of juxtaposition raises culture up yeah. and like plays against the apathy. No, so look, that's actually the key word. The Trump election win and the Brexit referendum vote was about apathy. It wasn't about yeah. anger. It's about the people who didn't vote. They were too cool to give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. That was the issue. The issue isn't the people who yeah. voted. If you, if you forced everyone to vote, well, you would have had a different... Yeah, outcome, you, you, yeah. You're right. The, the, the issue was apathy, which is a word he brings yeah. up. Here's my whole thing. Culture is saturated because we've grown up and we've had it and we've misused it and we've loved it and we have technology. They are parts of the world. They've never had it. That's where culture is next. So post the Enlightenment, in Europe, you had the Renaissance, right, where a new way of thinking had to occur. You know, because post-religion and science, people were just like, okay, now art is the way forward, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone became some sort of artist in some form. Now, my whole thing is this. Everyone over here has had all of this. We're, enti we're, we're super entitled in the West. We've had time and energy and money and resources to do whatever we want. There are parts of the world they haven't had that. That's where culture is next. So we actually need to be explorers. We need to go to those places yeah. and interact with those people with the knowledge that we have because what we've got here is too much and your belly's full. That's what apathy is. It's like, I've just had it for so long. I don't care if I, you know, I don't eat. I don't care if I drink water anymore. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't it. like, all I care about is if the Wi-Fi code is on. <laughs> no. like, give me the Wi-Fi code. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fully no. If I iPhone. But that's the thing. But that's why people like Virgil, Heron, you, Asa, are important because on a micro to macro level, let's say the t-shirt, a lot of guys in our age group are just like, another graphic tee? Apathy, because we, they hung out at Union. They yeah, had, the, you know, brand. they had the first, the first boring. Supreme t-shirt yeah. with Robert De Niro on it from Taxi Car Driver. So when I dropped No Vacancy, they're like, oh, another fucking t-shirt. Oh, you're referencing Carlito's way. Oh, cool. You <laughs> know what I mean? Whereas the culture is people who don't hold on. That goes into the art dad thing. Holding on to the torch, wherever you want to call it, no matter what, and not getting apathetic and not being like, oh. And being, and being progressive with it because there's an example that we can all kind of get our head around. It's simple, like New York rap and Atlanta rap, right? New York reached saturation. There was a rapper in every corner and New York believed in itself so much purely based on the I was one of them at one point. Right, right. So, so a long time and ago. in Atlanta, they never got to shine. In the you galaxy know, they had, they far, had little, far away. They had yeah. little hits, your Jermaine know. Dupree or whatever. All Gucci Man did was create culture at such a vigorous level outside of because if he'd come from New York, he would just have been another guy trying to yeah. sign to Bad Boy. Is music dead? Absolutely not. Not at all. Impossible. Not because at all. I'm not, you know, just throwing it out. But why does music feel different now than it did when we were in teenagers in high school? Be because we expect the format. Because we're expecting the same hit from the same old drug. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We expect it to feel the same way you did when you first smoked weed or whatever, sniff, blow, or whatever people do. Like I think it's um, the more you listen to music and the more your knowledge grows, you have to just go dig deeper. For me, you know, I thought I knew a lot about music till I met A-Side and, and Benji B and moved to London, and that reinvigorated my interest in it. You know what I mean? You know, like, I had, I had New York on lock, and I never did parties. I only did parties for, like, my birthday. You know, like Cafe Select, I'll do a birthday. You know, if a new spot open, that's where I do my birthday party or something. But I didn't give a fuck. Where coming to London, meeting all these DJs, you know, hanging out yeah. at his crib, listening to vinyl, shit I never heard before, you know, smoking stogies. It's like, oh shit, yeah, let's do a party. Because yeah. it made me give a fuck again. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think music is dead. I think it's, you ha it's harder. There's so much of it now, it's harder to find it. You know what I mean? Like, it's harder to find it. Like, A side. Like yeah, right. example. Be, Sorry, go for it. No, I'm just like trying to find music. It's like growing up listening to the same shit. It's like, all right, I'm bored. I want to listen to something new. It's like, where do you find it? It's like, I listen to like, B I listen to Benji B. He always like plays some new shit or like Nova Nova Planet in, in, in Paris would break a lot of new, a new music for me. It was like, man, like, what else is out there? It's like, there's more genres than just rap. Yeah, we're all, d so we DJ. We like, because I'm asking these, this roundabout thing questions on like our culture litmus test so club culture is obviously like a cornerstone of like <laughs> as i see like the airplane with the live <laughs> club live like well, <laughs> my name banner on some shit. By, by, by the way <laughs> miami club stop trolling me i don't want to come to your parties <laughs> <laughs> 
Please. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see you in Live last night. That would have been. <laughs> I think I've been to Live once for like five minutes and I don't even remember. It's rough. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. very rough. No, in fact, I did go. I remember seeing Lil Wayne smoking. But that's it. Was top that of that me playing last night in front of those kids uh, before as Cascade, Calvin Harris, and Skrillex pull up is the exact same thing at our ba- the Basil tent. And then that. that yeah, thing. yeah. It's easy. For me, it's like I gotta go into these other spaces and play James Blake just Uncom- one time make for culture. Yeah. You know, like you know, I, the last record I left for Cascade to come on to was "Knock If You Buck." <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the whole thing: why music isn't Fuck dead because up. someone's brain in there got sort of reformulated based on what you did, and they yeah. go back to wherever they're from and take that and try and. The history of music, as as I know it, is just basically people making mistakes and actually thinking what they're doing is what they think they're doing, and then a new genre emerges. So all all the guys who did rock and roll in England, they thought they were playing the blues, but they're British. Are we in a, maybe, shit, maybe we don't have it backwards. Culture is probably at its best it's ever been. Just use that as a case study. Like, this might be the best time ever. Absolutely. And is this a, this is like a renaissance, maybe. Absolutely, because we have There's more DJs, there's more clothing designers, there's less... Uh, we have there's less cloud. corporations that are telling kids what to wear. It's actually the other way around. This might be the best time in music, Bottom the up. best time in fashion, the but, best but time in life. Yeah, but it is. Think about it. The One of the biggest, not the biggest, but yeah, in a way, most ac- the most ac- anticipated album of the year was uh, Blonde, right? And it was, he dropped it independent. This That's unheard of. You know what I mean? It never would have happened in the 90s or the 80s or even early 2000s. So here's the thing, sir. Here's the thing. The Mona Lisa is telling us it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> the Mona Lisa of yeah. culture in the uh, corner. Mona Lisa. <laughs> no, so here's the thing. It's very simple. I think this is the best time, in my opinion. But the problem is we're, we're well-educated enough to know how to use the tools that we have in front of us because we came from a time when that part of it was important. Right now, it's all there, and people don't know how to use it because they don't have the education. And that's the actual issue. Yeah. That's why culture feels a little bit redundant because any kid could be a better DJ than all of us combined in our dreams and a better designer. And because all the information that I didn't have is available exactly. right now. But they don't know how to grasp that information. And, and it's, che- it it's cheaper to fly places. Yeah. Right. You know, you can deals <laughs> resell some sh- resell some but, shit but that's and what buy I'm trying a plane to say. ticket. But, but the, the, the thing is, it, it's been obscured by Grailed. it's been obscured by likes and retweets. That's the issue. Take away the likes and retweets and get back to actually getting yourself informed. But the next Steve Jobs, the next Raph Simmons, the next, uh, uh, you know, Larry Hurd, they're going to look at they're going to look at the game <laughs> and just like catch it, catch ever catch the apathy, see the the trendy kids and just drop either drop a concept, you know, a new idea for a club, a new. Like it's gonna be an invention that's yeah, gonna like that's the, that's flood. the wave. Yeah, I just don't think we should look for it in the places that it's come from before. I think it's they they are new places. I, that, that's why I believe. Truth. That's why I left London because it, it, I've been there for and I've seen it. I've seen the cycle now. Whereas I actually feel like oh, okay, LA might be whack, so I actually need to go there. <laughs> yeah. No, like, yeah, because one no no one of the things that inspired me to start do those those string of house parties in LA was Virgil being like LA is whack, so it's just like that. <laughs> Whereas if I do a party in London, he will fly from fucking Hawaii <laughs> to do it. Like, you know, and like, and like 500 for, bucks for, for 500 bucks, he'll fly from wherever to come do the party. Whereas LA is like, I got to like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know what I had to throw <laughs> on that rider to get Virgil to come out. But that's interesting to me because that's the just challenge. Like yeah, the challenge. The challenge. Yeah, it's you a, know, it's a challenge. Like and it's also, it it's also open. It's an yeah. open opportunity. Whereas yeah. in London, we saw it, the amount of nightclubs that got closed in, a, yeah. in the space of one year. Yeah. Whereas in LA, what they're doing is opening nightclubs. So you, you know? see oper- opportunity and yeah. you see a breakthrough that, uh, yeah. when you and step out. Yeah, and what they're out. doing, yeah. English manufacturing, like no one can actually successfully run a streetwear brand out of the UK. You have to do fast fashion, which is all made in Europe, or you're doing tailoring, which costs a lot of money to produce and to sell mm. because it's just not set up like that over there. So to me, those places is where culture is eroding. It's come to its end because they've put, you know, they've made the price of New York living so expensive. Which which artists can survive? Culture is at an all time high. Look what Heron did during New York Fashion Week. Yeah, no, it was great. That it was great. You know what I mean? It That's just great. one of the best things I've seen in my life. 
Yeah, it was great. I'm 35. Mm-hmm. I've been going to the MoMA since I was a baby. That's one of the best things I've seen. So it's very alive, but it's like, where are you looking? Yeah, you got to step out. You know out. what I mean? You got to step out. Because you did something outside of what people would expect to present as whatever clothing or streetwear, whatever genre we want to lump ourselves into. Right. Right? And that's how you came up with something new. You got to like rewrite the write the rules and like write the future. Yeah. Step out of your box to like find breakthroughs because <clears throat> if we continue to just work within what we're working on, we're not going to really push anything forward. You know what I mean? So you say you have to step out of London and go to L.A., saw opportunity there i had to step out of like fashion to go work with sanitation yeah you know to push fashion forward and yeah. also sanitation forward yeah or just <laughs> people thinking about things in their life that help them you know what i mean yeah. that's what the vibe is of this talk got it because you know what? i hate these things because what <laughs> happens is it comes off like as soon as this in- this flyer gets posted like our names it like puts a drop in the bucket of us trying to be cool which i think we need to underline it's like the disclaimer do not listen to this if you think that this is a ploy to be cool my game and only doing things like this is to actually give the listener a trick that we've used that normally we wouldn't tell you otherwise yeah it breaks the whole system of our ogs that's how everything cool was built before and they're going to roll over so the trick if the kids picked it up through listening to this ramble it's basically like do the unexpected in an in an arena that the normal person wouldn't get. You know, like hair and press and DSNY. Me live. You know, me design Miami. You know, my brain moves too fast. So I just do too much shit. But it's like art dad. Unex- like ever while all the kids are running toward vector graphics and screen printed tees you know, the most washed flannel of all time <laughs> from a spot that you don't even know what the brand is, yep. is immediately cuts through this culture thing that we just try to define. So w- any Black other jewels? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're not doing this unless we get to this higher level <laughs> where A-side just drops the mic. Fidel That's side. That's going to end. <laughs> Fidel side. On that note... Mona Lisa in the Mona corner Lisa. saying to cut it. Yo, this is <laughs> No Vacancy and No Wave Q University. <laughs> Heron, um, Heron, Virgil, thank you. You guys are really busy, thank so you. I appreciate you hanging around. <laughs> this is yeah. it. See you tonight. <laughs> See you tonight. Just let the head out and then drop it. <laughs> <laughs>